three, two, one. What's going on everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash and it's time for the in and out weekly comics pull list. Every Wednesday, new comic book day, we do a pull list video. Um, Bats tried to make some argument. Sergeant Bats, if you guys don't know him, you should watch the channel. He tried to make some argument that it's not a pull list video. Pull list is about your comics that you get reserved and that your comic book store pulls for you and then you go pick them up every week and then he makes a haul video like because it's a whatever it's a pull it silly bats 27 that is the number of weeks this year this is the 27th pull this video that i've done in 2019 marvel is back <laughs> last week if you did watch you should watch last week's pull this video if you didn't that's a big monumental day for me. Halfway through the year, 26, Marvel had zero. For the first time ever, Marvel had zero number ones. And it was also the first time ever that I, not first time ever, first time since the 21st century that I am buying Marvel ongoing comics. It's a weird convergence. The planets all align just right. But now Marvel's like, gotcha. We're back to doing number ones. Of course, as always, Star Wars. Um, if you're going to have number ones, Star Wars constantly number ones. I think they've only missed twice this year. So that would be 24. No, 26. 24. No, 25. My God, my math is horrible. Jeez. 25 number one Star Wars books, at least. Because there may have been, there. I think there was a couple weeks where there was multiple Star Wars number ones. So, geez. <laughs> this is so sad. There's more number one. Star Wars comics this just this year than most Marvel comics are in numbers. Most Marvel comics are number 20 or less. There are more than 20. <laughs> God, so stupid. Wolverine gets a new series. Uh, mini series, of course. Exit Wounds. Finally, they're starting to cash in on this old cash cow. Still really weird that he doesn't have his on an ongoing series. They gave X-23 an ongoing series, then they canceled it when Wolverine came back, and then they gave it to her again, but Wolverine himself, one of the most popular Marvel characters ever, he's too high T. I think that's a problem for Marvel, is Wolverine is a ladies' man, he's high testosterone, smokes cigars, uh, he's just, he's a man's man, and Marvel does not like that, um... Spider-Man gets another series. I think this makes number 13. Reptilian Rage number one. Oh, God. If I'm correct, someone told me there were 12 ongoing Spider-Man books. This would make the 13th ongoing Spider-Man. And uh, speaking of Spider-Man, in the news, we've got... Um, look at this. J.J. Abrams and son Henry Abrams with artist Sarah Pacelli doing Spider-Man number one. Spider-Man, not Amazing Spider-Man, not Spectacular, just Spider-Man. Last time I remember them doing this was Todd McFarlane. You know, and back in the 90s, Todd McFarlane got his own Spider-Man number one, and it was a big deal in multiple ways. It was a big deal of fans, you know, it sold millions of copies. But it was also a big deal from a controversy standpoint because a lot of fans were like, Yay, we love Tom McFarlane. He's an amazing artist. He's my, our favorite Spider-Man artist. But who is he to get his own Spider-Man book? He's no writer. And a lot of fans kind of balked at the idea. Even though they were excited for, you know, anything that Todd McFarlane drew, they were also kind of like, that's bullshit. He shouldn't get his own book. <laughs> oh, if I can only talk to those fans those days and just tell them, like, hey, you know what? You think that's silly. In the future, they're just going to give some little kid who's a, who's the son of a, a famous Hollywood director his own book <laughs> like um, and and everyone's just gonna be like oh okay and it's gonna be Marvel's big announcement of the year so uh, this is this is a joke no one wanted this um, I actually in, in all honesty think this might be good um, I I just, first of all, J.J. Abrams, obviously, he's got talent. He knows his way around a story. Um, Henry Abrams is probably getting a lot of help from Dad. He's probably got this idea. He wants to tell the story. And then Dad comes in and says, you know, you shape it up this way. Take this out. Helps mold how, how it's being told. 
I have a feeling, especially in in the current Marvel era where they just they only have a few good writers, this will probably this will probably be better than most of the Spider Man books. I have a feeling. I don't think that this should have happened this way. I think that Marvel, if they're gonna do this, they should have just leaked it out real quietly and just sort of like let it appear in the previews and people discover it on their own and be like, wait, what's this? And not hype it up. And then once it became common news and everyone else kind of found out about it, then start pushing, uh, you know, step on the gas and start being like, yeah, we're really excited about this book. And Henry Abrams is turning in some good stuff. Or I think, you know, at that point, it's the audience is a little bit more ready to accept it. When you force this, when you're like, oh, we got this huge news and this giant, they have this countdown. And everyone's like, what could this countdown be? Because it's going to be. They're doing the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4 script that never got filmed? Holy shit. Is Todd McFarlane coming back? Oh, my God. And then you announce this. You're just like, what? This is the epitome of the white privilege that Marvel has been fighting against. Their, their, so their wokeness has been against for the past half decade or longer. <laughs> and now you're eh, so stupid. Um, what else we got today? Toy Story. All right, I forgot to introduce, joining me today, as always, my famous co-host, Stan the Man. He's always with us. Good to have you, Stan. And you can see we got a new co-host of the show. Uh, this is Forky, and um, Forky thinks he's trash, but he's not. Forky, you're not trash. Um, if you have not seen Toy Story 2, I really recommend it. Um, this, this film really moved me. I, I picked up... This Funko Forky. I don't pick up many Funko Pops. Um, I'm not one of those Funko junkies or Pop junkies, whatever you call them. I have four other Pops besides Stan that I'll bring out sometime. Um, of course, one of them is Ash, as you could imagine. I have a Jane from Firefly. Um, yeah, I got. there's two other mystery ones you'll have to see. So I got Stan, of course, when they did this, um, this faux... Uh, copper, what do they call it, patina uh, of Stan. I was like, oh, I gotta have this. But I saw Toy Story 4 and it really, really moved me. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me. Um, my good friend, uh, alarms. When you, have a, when you do things on your phone, be aware if you have alarms set, they will interrupt your video. <laughs> um, my good friend, his, his favorite Toy Story is number three. Um, a lot of people's favorite is number three, you know, it's, it's a massively highly acclaimed film. I think it's really good. It doesn't move me the way it moved others. Um, he was okay with this film. I've seen some people online that were just like, eh, Toy Story 4 is kind of meh. I so disagree. Um, this character here, Forky, is... At first, when I was watching the film, I was like, oh, he's kind of a metaphor for uh, special needs children, right? Because um, he, he, if you see the film, you'll get it. Like, um, he, he's, he's not all there together, and he's got some issues. And the rest of the toys kind of have to try to take care of him. And I was like, oh, it's kind of this, this metaphor for that, and... But then I realized that's not really the case and that the toys are more of a metaphor for kind of parents. They take care of the child. And um, that Forky is um, kind of an analogy and a, and a commentary on self-worth and how you feel about yourself. And Forky, because he's made of trash, he thinks he's trash. He comes to life when he's made as a toy by the little girl, Bonnie, in the, in the movie. And because he's made of trash, he, he's like, oh, I'm trash. And he's constantly trying to throw himself away. And, and uh, uh, Woody is constantly rescuing him and trying to tell him how, how, worth, how you know, important he is and how much he means to people. And there's this, this really just strong commentary on self-worth and people caring about you and... Uh, it's amazing how Toy Story is able to tell these heavy topics. Like you could, if you wanted to, you could see um, Forky constantly throwing himself into the trash can um, as symbolic of like suicide. He's constantly trying to basically kill himself. Uh, but of course, 
in Toy Story, they don't do it like that. It's it's very much subdued. It's very much done in a, in a cartoony thing, and kids kids just appreciate it. Like, oh, it's a funny this Forkies, and oh, and he learns to be to feel important. But as an adult, you can see those layers and just be like, wow, these topics that they're able to cover, and they do it in such a fashion. And what I love is the support structure that Forky has, and Woody is constantly trying to help him. And Woody, who's never really been my favorite character in Toy Story, shines so much in this film, and he is so heroic, not just to Forky, but to and other other characters, and there's other subplots in the in the in the movie, and. Uh, there's a line where he says, uh, leave no toy behind. And in the context of, of the film, you're just like, to me, it just hit, it hit me in the, in the, all the soft spots. And, uh, Woody is a true hero. <laughs> like this, the reason I bring this up, you're like, Ash, this is, I thought this was about comics. Well, it kind of is, but it's also about superheroes. Comics to me are about heroism and stuff. And Toy Story is a hero story. Um, Comics are can be a metaphor for life and and things like that. And these characters are in in their own way. You know, they're not capes. You know, they're not superheroes in spandex, but they are heroes. And this is a heartwarming, fantastic story about friendship, family, love, and uh, taking care of each other, redemption. If, if you're a person who's like, man, comics need to be, you know, these have these journeys and I'm so sick of these Mary Sue characters and all this stuff, you know, this movie will give you uh, a hero's journey of imperfect characters, uh, people that are t torn astray and have redemption arcs. And it's just, it, it I teared up several times during the film. So um, I've blabbered on long enough. Forky will now be joining us. He is uh, very meaningful to me. And what, Forky, what are you, Stan, what, it's not your drink, Stan? Forky, you don't drink pee. Don't let this, dare, this Deadpool buffoon trick you, okay? You're not drinking pee. What is it anyway? Oh, it's not pee, it's tea. Mmm, peach tea, good to go, all right. Forky, I know that you want to be useful, and you are, but this is a uh, finger food. We don't need, actually, utensils to eat this. This is an In-N-Out burger. We unbox it every week. Oh, look at this. Jostled in the car ride. I gotta drive more cautious on the way home. Look at this. You're like, oh, gross, sticking your finger. It's not your burger. It's my burger. I can stick my finger in it if I want. Um, look at that, delicious. Double double with onions, extra spread, add pickles, and uh, add ketchup onto the spread in the bottom bun. That's how I get my burger. If you have an in and out near you and you want to taste how I get my burger, that's how you do it. And uh, I'm going to box this out. I'm going to eat this. What am I doing? I'm going to eat this and uh, maybe give a bite to these guys, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I got. Mm. Got my box. There's a spoiler. Got my pull list there. Here's what's inside. Here's the receipt. Oh my goodness. That is way too high. I need to cut this down. Um, there's, show me your floppies. I'm showing you my receipts. Now I'm going to show you my floppies. This is the first book we got this week. Look at that. Oh, that Jim Lee cover is pretty sick. I like when Jim Lee kind of goes off and goes like kooky do in <laughs> styling. Um, I, I, you know, he's got his, you know, his standard Jim Lee style that everyone knows so well, but I, I like it when he does this sort of stuff and uh, ventures outside of the box. So this would not fit in my box. It's the big giant magazine format and it's book three. It is over and I'm kind of glad I don't have to keep buying these expensive ass books. Oh wait, I do, I have to get Superman. <laughs> Oh well, um, I'm enjoying that book, and that's only got two more issues. So, starting off, we've got uh, Henry Cavill, number one. Oh wait, I mean, uh, this is, what the hell is this? Action Comics 1012. 
Uh, let's see, we'll put these over here. 1012, it is the last Bendis book I am buying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, you get the point. Man, I <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't be doing this right after I eat a, eat a burger. Ah, pause it to get a drink there. Yeah, I shouldn't do this after I eat a burger, especially when I scarf it down. Uh, and then I'm like all burping and stuff when I'm trying to do the video, but it's an all right cover. The A cover to this issue was fantastic. I love that. I was like, man, if I didn't get all the B covers, I would have picked it up. But uh, this one's not a terrible cover, but it's just a bust shot. Um, it does really look like it's just Henry Cavill. It's like someone just got a picture of him and kind of painted over it. Um, but yeah, anyways, I am done. If you saw my Superman 12 review, you probably will understand why. Action Comics has actually been better, but I'm just done. I'm done. I, $4 an issue. Um, this will now be 30 issues that I've bought, if you count the Man of Steel miniseries, of just the Superman. 30 issues times $4. That's $120? What, $120? That I'm, I'm not getting back. Bendis isn't refunding me. DC's not refunding me. It's not worth it. I'm going to do a review on this book. Um, fortunately, I'm buddies with Comic Corks, who loves Bendis, and he'll buy Bendis until he dies. Um, and I can maybe read his copies or someone else's and do reviews, maybe, if I don't want to shoot myself in the face. Uh, here's Batman Detective Comics 1006. Whoa, what's new here? If you're watching channel, you notice I always get the B covers. I am, I am weaning myself off B covers. Um, I'm getting tired of them. Some of them are really beautiful. This month's was gorgeous, the B cover. Um, but I, I'm getting sick of these ugly B covers, and I'm getting sick of not having trade dress, and this is the inconsistency. And there's so many times like, and now DC put the straw that broke the camel's back. They're releasing B covers this summer with a special card back in the stock. Like the what they did with uh, Heroes in Crisis, that little thicker cardboard covers. But they're going to charge a dollar extra. I'm just like, F you. And my OCD, I'm like, I'm not going <sighs> to. so stupid. Just stop preying on customers and just make good comics. So I'm weaning myself off. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm completing the full art covers because of my OCD of the runs that I'm on. For instance, here's Flash, year one, chapter four. Um, since I was getting full arts, I'll keep this. Actually, I buy this for my friend's daughter, so I'm gonna ask her what she wants. If she wants full art covers, so I'll keep getting those. Um, and then I believe this is the last issue of the current Justice League Dark. And look at that beautiful, I'm not a fan of Swamp Thing, but Damn, that's a gorgeous Swamp Thing cover. Um, if you are a fan of Swamp Thing, this is probably the cover you want. This is the last, I believe, the last issue of this arc. So on the next one, I will transition over to the trade dress. Um, the Martian Manhunters. I was always getting the A covers, except for the B one, because I mistook it. Because these covers are kind of weird anyway. The trade dress is in the bottom. Um, but I, I really liked the Martian Manhunter covers and this is a good book. It's an underrated book. It's a good detective story. Um, it's a good origin of Martian Manhunter. It's a good redemptive arc. I mean, Martian Manhunter does not start off as a hero. This guy is kind of a scum bucket, <laughs> um, but he, he's going to overcome that. Speaking of overcoming, we're not going to see an overcoming of the silencer look at this is the most beautiful in my opinion cover of the silencer to date so they ended up on a bang with that oh look at that and it's it's sad to buy a book when you know it's canceled and you're just like oh and you gotta like just buy the remaining issues it takes all the excitement out but uh committed to this shame on you dc for not supporting this book um and also Shame on, you know, all the SJWs who constantly talk about the representation in comics and stuff. DC gave you an entire line 
of comics full of representation. Uh, Silencer is it's a comic starring a female for protagonist who's also a woman of color, and no one cared. By that I mean all the white supremacist comic bigots that SJWs want to talk about didn't care <laughs> because they don't really exist. Comic book fans just want good comics. And all the SJWs are like, we need more. I can't, I can't see myself in these characters. Where were you? Where were you buying this comic? You're not buying the comic. <sighs> so it's canceled. Yay. We are, everyone loses. Thanks. Everyone loses when SJWs get involved. Now, uh, Spawn, Road to 300. Take a look at this price up here, 299. $2.99. I have nothing but respect for Todd McFarlane not trying to gouge fans and trying to just do cool comics. That is what he wants to do. He just wants to have cool comics. Spawn, I will be honest, is not my favorite character. He's not my type of character. I'm not into the dark, gothic-y kind of monster horror characters. Um, that's why Justice League Dark was kind of a mend. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get into this. I don't really like characters that deal with, like, demons. And I never got into magic stuff like Doctor Strange. I never... Comics, I like the straight-laced heroes in tights sort of stuff. And yes, I know Spawn is in tights or whatever, but... You get what I'm saying. Um, I only bought Spawn in the, in the beginning because I was a huge McFarlane fan. And I was like, oh, whatever you make, Todd, I'll read your character. You know, this is the character you created when you were a kid. Fine. Um, so I read it, and I'm like, okay. But it's really not my thing. I wasn't, like, super excited about Spawn. He doesn't... He's just not my thing. That's And that's fine. But what is my thing is what Todd's doing with comics and how his approach... And he's just trying to do good comics. He's not trying to sell you a message. He's not, you know, doing any of that stuff. And he's not trying to rake you over the coals with $3.99 price tag. It's basically showing you that Marvel and DC are ripping you off. Then I got Bloodshot Rising Spirit. This should be the last episode. Thank God. I'm done with Valiant. I will finish up my Fallen World, which is okay. Um, but I'm not going to buy Valiant anymore. Uh, Valiant has just decided to go... Bleh! Into the trash, right, Forky? Um, but they keep getting me the pre-order editions, so I'm like, all right, I'll keep getting, you know, getting these. Um, however, thank you, Valiant, for uh, you know shitting the bed and deciding to go all social justice and screw up your entire comic book line. Uh, you're not Marvel, so you can't get away with it the way they can. Um, so you made room in my budget. I found a new comic. It's called Ascender. Uh, it's by Jeff Lemire and Justin Nguyen, or Wen, or Win. I'm never going to pronounce this right. Because um, I just, I look at the letters and it does This is a good book. It, at first, I, the watercolor art with the type of story kind of threw me off. And I read it again. I did a review on this book. You can hear all the details. This book won me over. It grew on me. And the more I thought about it, it stayed in my head. It, you know, I just mulled over it, and it just kept me thinking about it, kept me thinking about it. Then I read Descender Number 1, which is the prequel. So I did a review on that book, too. If you want to know all about it, read that. See, at least look at the Ascender review. This is a good book, and I'm sold. And I love this about comics, that, you know, finding these gems that are out there. Um, I know a lot of people are big fans of Jeff Lemire and, and so forth, and... I guess Descender did pretty well. But these type of books do not do the sort of thing that DC and Marvel do. They don't have that sort of reach. Um, but this book, pay attention to this. Uh, at least if you're not interested, if it's not, doesn't seem like in your wheelhouse, you know, shameless plug, watch my video. I will do reviews on these books. And, you know, if it goes south, I'll be honest with you. And, you know, just... It's okay to reach out and try new things. I, I, I really encourage people to do that. I think a lot of times we can get stuck in ruts and go, this is just all that I like. And that's fine if you're, you know, that's, you're, I used to only think I liked X-Men, you know, and then I discovered other things. And um, 
I don't know. I'm not here to preach you. I'm not. I just like, I like to share the things that I love and I want other people to experience that same feeling I get. And so I, that's why if I sound ever pushy on certain books or whatever, it's just because I'm like, I like it so much. I want you to like it too. You know, like that's where it comes from. Um, so here's my polls for the week. What do you think is going to be the best? Um, I'm really hoping detective Tomasi has been turning out good stories, but not like great. Like he started his run. Um, I've been liking flash year one, uh, Martian man. I've been liking, uh, this is over now. I don't think this is going to be, and that's definitely not going to be, it could be a sender and maybe hopefully Batman damned. I mean, this preview premium book I'm buying cause it's black label and it's all beautiful, but you know, hopefully the story can wow me and I can look back and go, oh, that was such an amazing experience. Um, it's definitely not going to be this. <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks Stan and Forky for being here and, uh, bringing me some pee, Forky. We're going to have to work on your drinks. You're, you're no Stan. Um, thank you guys for watching. I know that you could watch anything on YouTube. There's billions of videos out there. The fact that you're even giving me five seconds of your time means a lot. And please put your comments down below. I love interacting with people. That's why I do this. So meet new people, talk with them, talk comics. And um, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, oh, hey, you're still there? Uh, you know what this smile means? Something came in. Uh, I knew it was going to come in. Uh, I got real lazy and didn't get my video published in time. So, hey, it's like I'm going to get this uh, added to my pull list because it's comic book related. What could it be? Okay, now, silly me, I've already did the unboxing video once. I didn't have my mic plugged in. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Um, so, this is sort of a fake unboxing. Well, what could it be? This is really hard to do with one hand. And by the way, guys, you just chill out there. It's totally cool, don't, don't need any help. They're useless. No, they're not. Just kidding. Forky, you're not useless. Stan, you're the man. Um, nice big book. Look at this. Wait, it's upside down. It's backwards. Look. It is the Descender Deluxe Hardcover Volume 1. That's what that one is. Um, this is a two-volume set. It contains the first 16 issues of Descender, which was a 32-issue run. It is the first series, the prequel, I guess, if you will. Although I don't know if it's a direct prequel to Ascender. You can see that it's oversized. Here's my Ascender book. A little bit bigger. Um, maybe slightly not as wide as like Batman Damned, but nice oversized hardcover deluxe edition. Um, it's pretty thick. You can see... Let's get Stan over here to help us out. Thanks, Stan. Yeah, so you can see it's pretty thick edition. Um, it reminds me of like my high school yearbook. I don't know, not everyone went to the same type of high school. If you went to a moderately sized high school, um, you probably had a thick yearbook. It, it's a non-slip case, um, hardback design. I can't really tell in the light here, but like they do this sort of the backing, like the board, it's all uh, matte white, and then this gloss on the picture and on the lettering up here, it looks much better in person. I saw this in the store. Let's see if I can catch the light there so you can see. Um, I saw this in the store and I was just like, oh, it's gorgeous. Now, my store has, um, has the entire Descender run except for issue one. They have two through 32. And really good price, like a quarter over cover price. And since these were like $2.99, it's like $3.25 an issue. So I originally was like, oh, I'm just going to collect this whole series. You know, once a week, I'll just buy a back issue and I'll just add it. And I was, gonna, I was like, okay, that'll work. Um, and then I thought, you know what? My, 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 uh, my collection's already too big. So this is my solution. Um, I really like, I saw this on the, the shelf and I was like, ooh, this is beautiful. And 
It's normally $50, but Amazon had them for $30 with Prime shipping. So, yeah, I was like, Volume 2 comes out in December. I can pre-order for $35 right now. $34, $34, $35. Um, I really would just like to have both of these up on the shelf. And um, if Ascender turns out to be, you know, as, you know, what I'm, what it seems to be, that might be something worth buying the same volumes, have this whole collection. Because you can see, I mean, this is one of these books that's just like an art showcase as well as, you know, a good story. Um, the first, the, it's what it is, it's, if you can't tell here, it's watercolor over pencils. And um, it's got a really striking look to it. Um, now, at first I wasn't real pleased with this. I was like, well, it looks cool, but it doesn't fit what you know being like sci-fi and uh which is weird like see the artist is really good the pen i love the pencils but the watercolor just felt out of place for for a sci-fi setting but it grew on me and so now um i don't notice it like i did it doesn't stand out as far as like being weird or awkward it just looks beautiful um and this whole book just Wow, now that I'm holding this in my hand, it's so it's so cool to have. Um, so, yeah, so for 30 bucks, I mean, let's face it, I was just gonna buy all of these floppies and they were gonna sit in a box <laughs> to collect dust. Um, I don't need boxes and boxes of floppies. I do like collecting comics, um, and there's definitely, I'm not trying to suggest anyone don't collect comics, but this was a little bit more economical and it was gorgeous and it'll go with my sender. And anyways, I just wanted to show it. It's a, this is the little appendage to my haul video to make it even longer because you know, it wasn't long enough. <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, I'm excited. So yeah, look at this haul now, baby. Woo. All right. Thanks for watching.